my beautiful, strong, happy and healthy people, Tia Marks here. And in this video, I want to talk to you guys about my unmedicated natural induction story. Now, my little man is 10 days old, so I figured I would do this now before I completely forget about my whole experience. Now, I always knew I was going to be induced. I didn't want to be induced. I always had that being induced is a lot more painful than letting your body go into labor naturally. But my mum was actually quite late with myself and all my siblings, so I always figured there was a really good chance that I would end up being induced as well. I just figured it's probably more than likely a genetic thing. Now, at this point, I was 41 weeks and two days, but based on my conception date, I was actually at 42 weeks and one day. So before going in for my induction on this Saturday, I did do two membrane sweeps, one on a Wednesday and one on a Friday. Now the first membrane sweep, I was not dilated at all. I was, my cervix was a little bit thin, but not really. So she couldn't actually get into my cervix and do a full uh, sweep. But what she did is she just kind of massaged the outside area just to kind of get the hormones going and to get everything going. Now, by the time I got there on the Friday, I was already one centimeter dilated and my cervix thinned a lot. So that first membrane strip did make a massive difference. Now, I do want to point out that I did try all those online things. I bounced on the ball, I went for the walks, I did all the spicy food, I did, had intercourse, I ate pineapple, I ate dates. I tried all the things that people would generally recommend to try and naturally induce labor for about three weeks leading up to this point. But nothing seemed to have worked. Now, the Saturday morning, I went in for the start of my induction process. Now they started with a balloon. The way they did this is they had a balloon, they had a string with two water balloons. The inside of the string had to be at least a centimeter dilated for this to work. And then they filled it up with water. You couldn't really feel it, it was a bit of discomfort. Um, it was not painful whatsoever. Now they said come back in 12 hours unless the balloon falls out earlier. Uh, within four hours, I was at home. I was about to take a nap because I didn't sleep much the day before and went to the bathroom and the balloon fell out straight away in the bathroom. It was actually really scary because I was like, what is happening? Something is falling out of me. It felt strange. It was not painful. It was effortless, but just that feeling of something sliding out of your cervix was definitely a bit of a shock. Now, as soon as the balloon fell out, me and my partner got ready and we started to head to the hospital. So here was the worst part of the whole birthing story. We got to the hospital and we had to wait in a waiting room for two hours before we got looked at. My partner had to start work at 3 a.m. that day. I was on about four hours sleep as well. So we would have really enjoyed a quick nap before we were going through a whole 24 hour birthing ordeal. So by the time we got looked at um, and after two hours, then we were shifted to another room. They checked me out. And then I just went from room to room being checked out. They put me in a waiting room. At this point, I was having really bad contractions. And they said, we're going to be in this waiting room for at least three hours until there is a room available for us to give birth in. Now, my partner decided to have a sleep, so that was good. And I just went and sat in the shower because the contractions were pretty intense by this point. It got to a point where I was thinking, there's no way I can keep going. It was more than three hours. So I went to a midwife and I was like, how much longer am I going to be here for? Because I am having really bad contractions and I need to kind of give birth soon. Oh, I feel like I'm going to go into actual labor. And the midwife I talked to said, actually, all our birthing suites are full and there's a good chance I'm not going to get in until the morning. Now I'm thinking there's a good chance I'm going to give birth before the morning. There's no way I can actually wait that long to give birth. I waited another hour called another midwife and I was like, I need to know how long is it going to take me to get to get into a birthing suite because I'm in so much pain. And she said, if she checks my cervix and about five centimeters dilated, then I can get put to the top of the list and I can get a birthing suite, suite straight away. So I was in so much pain. I was like, okay, let's see how far I am. And I was five centimeters dilated. So once you're five centimeters dilated, that's what you can, that's what you call active labor. So at this point I've been in labor for 12 hours and I'm just hitting active labor and that's where the contractions start to get like real fun. So I was five centimeters dilated so they found me a birthing suite straight away. Thank God I asked because I was not going to make it to the morning alone. So I went down the birthing suite, I see a nice big bath, I see a shower, I'm in quite a bit of pain, I'm waiting for the lady to do my paperwork and then I shoot naked and hop into the bath. So the, the nurses clock out at 7 p.m. and then clock back and then they do another switch at 7 a.m. So I went in, had a nurse, this was about 6 p.m. 
she was just about to finish her shift. So then she finished and then a new nurse came in and I had her for 12 hours. And then before I gave labor 12 hours later, I had a new set of nurses as well. So I couldn't even tell you what half of these people actually look like because I was in so much pain. Okay, so got into the birthing room, I was in quite a bit of pain. So I realized the shower was actually so helpful. So I figured let's try the bath. So lay down in the bath and I found a couple of positions that actually worked well and I could get through the contractions. It got to about 11 p.m. and the contractions were getting real. So I was in so much pain. So at this point, I've been from the, from the start of my induction, I was 14 hours in and I was feeling it. Now, I was in that much pain. I actually really wanted an epidural. I was begging for an epidural. I was talking to my partner and I was like, I am so the reason I really want to epidural is I just needed to sleep. I needed a rest. I was just so tired. It wasn't, the contraction pain was intense, but it was just because I was getting so tired with the contraction pain. I was throwing up quite a bit by this point. Um, your body just tries to get everything out. So with the pain, I was throwing up. I had nothing left in my stomach. I didn't eat all day because I was threw up first thing in the morning when they did the balloon. I left that part out. Um, when the contractions first hit, I threw up. And then when the contractions got bad, I was throwing up. Now, at this point, I just really wanted to sleep. So I said to my partner, I was like, I don't think I can take this too much longer. I think I need an epidural. I was asking the nurse, how much longer is this going to take? She's like, it's a slow process. It's going to take a long time. So I begged for an epidural at this point because I just couldn't take it any longer. And a doctor came in and explained to my partner and myself the whole process of an epidural. I was barely even focusing on him because I was in that much pain. And my partner was listening to everything that can go wrong. You can get paralyzed. You can lose. You can have bowel movement issues the rest of your life. You can have nerve issues. You can have spinal issues. And he's looking at me. He's just like, you can't do that. You can't do that to yourself. That's such a high risk. And I'm in too much pain where he doesn't believe that I am in a state to make these decisions for myself. So he actually went up to the doctor and said, she doesn't need an epidural anymore. She's fine. You can go. So I'm there laying on the bed in agony, waiting, thinking, okay, the pain's gonna be over, I'm gonna be able to sleep through this, I can rest, I can have something to eat, I can get through the rest of this labor, and next minute the doctor walks away. And I'm thinking, Where, where's the doctor going? Isn't he gonna start getting ready to prep me? And then my partner says, oh, I told him to go away, you didn't need him. Oh my God, was I in shock. I could not believe that he told the doctor to go away. I was in so much pain. And he said, you don't need that, you'll be fine. So the doctor said, I want to come back in 20 minutes and if you still need me, then I'll do it. If not, you can continue going on your own. So I was just like, I need to hop in the shower. Laying in the bed made it so much worse. The only way I found relief was laying in the bath or in the shower. So I sat in the shower and I couldn't find a comfortable position. And then I went on my knees and I bent my hands on top of the toilet seat, put a towel on the toilet seat and was pretty much in an all fours position. And I stayed like that from about 11.30 until about 7 a.m. I was in, I found a position that was more of like a zone. So every time a contraction hit, I would just kind of get ready for it and I could just stay in this position. I barely talked the whole time. Now my partner used the shower head and he had the hose on my back and was just putting hot water on my back. And that was the only way to get a little bit of pain relief um, for me. They tried to give me the gas, but I couldn't take a breath in enough for the gas to actually have any effect on me. So the gas was completely useless. And now I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking, there's no, I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking, I'm gonna give birth at about 3 a.m. There's no chance I'm gonna go over 3 a.m. I was like, 3 a.m. I'm, I'm probably gonna give birth. And it got to 3 a.m. and I still have not gave birth and I'm still having contractions. I'm saying to the nurse, how much longer? And she's like, hopefully for your sake, not too much longer. I'm like, okay, it's going to be 4 a.m. I'm just looking at the clock. And then it got to 4.30. And then I'm like, okay, I was born at 6 a.m. Maybe I'm going to give birth at 6 a.m. It got to 6 a.m. and still no baby. Now, the nurse said at this point, when you start to feel pressure, like you want to do a poop, let her know. So she checked to see how dilated I was, and I was 9 centimeters dilated. But the problem was, is I still had something in the way in my cervix that she said that when this pressure comes, don't push, fight against it, because otherwise you can burst something and it can block the baby and then we might have to end up in a C-section. So every time this really painful pressure came that gave me this urge to push, I clung on to resist it from happening and that made the pain and the contractions so much worse. 
So at this point, I'm about 6.30, almost 7 a.m. And I'm saying to the nurse, I'm like, I need to start, I need to start pushing. I physically can't hold on any longer. This resisting is painful. My, this, like, I need to push. So I'm in the shower and I'm starting to push and nothing, nothing's happening. You just feel, you feel like you're doing massive poos. And yes, some poo does come out, but good thing I'm in the shower. And I'm pushing at this point for about 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I can feel that something's happening now. So I said that I want to hop out of the shower and I'm going to go onto the bed. So we hopped onto the bed and I was in an all fours position. And we start pushing. Now it hit about 7 a.m. And the next switch of nurses come in. So two new nurses come in. I am butt naked, all four position on the bed. Um, not screaming, but grunting into a pillow on my face because the pain is starting to get quite real. And new nurses came in, they were introducing themselves and I'm there like in so much pain, not even paying attention to what they're saying. But then we start going through the process of pushing. Um, the one, and then the goal was to get the baby out of the, I think it's the cervix, into the vagina, so to get the head. That was probably one of the most painful parts. So that took about an hour to get the head from there to the, into the vagina. Now, the one thing that surprised me the most about giving birth is one, pushing actually is the best part of the whole birth. I feel like most people take epidurals because they're scared of the pushing as opposed to the giving birth. And they think if the contractions hurt, the pushing has to hurt. But the pushing actually feels like a release and it actually feels so much better than the actual contractions do. Do you want more milk already? Bit of my let down milk from before. Okay, and the other thing that surprised me about pushing is that in movies, when you push, it's like you, they do these big pushes and the head comes out and the body comes out. But it's not like that at all. I explain it more as like a little 3D printer that it's slowly coming out. Now, you push, the head comes out a little bit and then the head goes back in. You push again, it comes out a bit more and then it comes back in. So the lady said that when I push, I have to start holding the push in between the contractions. So you only push when there's a contraction. So I do a nice big push and then I have to keep the pressure on the whole time so the baby's head doesn't sink back in. Now this whole moment of between getting the head out to the rest of the body out was about 15 minutes. So it is a very slow process of pushing bit by bit. So when, so we got to a point that laying, doing the all fours position wasn't working and it ended up having me on my side and my partner was holding one leg up and I had to lean forward and brace as I was pushing. I actually had a really sore neck the next day because they told me to push my head in to kind of use my whole body with the pushing. Now my partner actually decided to watch the whole experience but given the fact that he actually had to help hold my head, like he didn't really have much of a choice but to watch the whole experience anyway. So once the head came out, the rest of the body was pretty easy from there. The head was probably the most painful part. The shoulders were pretty intense, but nothing nearly as much as the head. And even when we got to the legs, you had to do one final push, even just to get the legs out. Now, once he was out, they put him on my chest and they had to squeeze my stomach and the placenta came out. Then the placenta just felt like this big jelly octopus just sliding out of you. It was completely effortless. Some people say it's like giving birth to a second, another baby. It's not painful at all. It's just kind of weird feeling of something emptying, slipping out of you. It feels kind of like, an, like a slimy octopus. Now I am laying there with him on my chest and he's crying and covered in goo and I'm cuddling him and they're pushing on my stomach and just draining out blood after blood after blood. They were just changing the pads under me because it was just flooding of blood. They had to get out. So apparently you have about two wine bottles worth of blood extra in your body. So they're draining all that out of you. Now, after we cut the umbilical cord, he has a little bit of feed. They had someone come in and I had a second degree tear. She did some stitches and now she numbed the area and then she does her first stitch and I look at her and I'm like, you know, I can feel that, right? And then she's like, oh, let me just check the area. And then she had to add in some more numbing, numbing like needle or whatever she put in me um, because I could actually feel when she started on the stitches. But you've got so much adrenaline and so much going on that you don't even care about the fact that you're getting stitched up. You don't care about the fact that there's 
people coming in, you don't care about the fact that you're naked or that you're covered in blood or anything. You're just there pretty happy and relieved that it's all over and that he's finally in your hands. Even like during the birth, I'm not really good with needles. They had to put in a um, drip thing in my vein and a lady came in and she tried it three times in one hand. I could feel her moving the needle around, which usually I would faint and pass out with that but or throw up but because of the contraction pain it, it did not bother me whatsoever i didn't even care that she's doing that and another nurse had to come in and try the other side and she tried it in three different areas as well so i had a lot of needles with them just trying to figure out how to find my veins because i haven't had any water that day because i threw up everything i haven't had any food i had heartburn so i wasn't going to take anything down um, and I was in the hot, a really hot bath and shower, so I was fully dehydrated. So for them to try and get my veins was really difficult. So even the fact that the contraction pain took over the, fact, the needle pain for me, whereas usually that needle pain would have been level 10. So after giving birth, we were in the birthing suite for about two, three hours before we moved into a room. They did the stitches. I got to have a quick shower in there. The shower was a little bit scary. Like I stood up the whole time. Most people sit down because they feel really, um, dizzy or faint because of all the blood loss but I felt pretty good and my partner was holding the little baby when they were doing all the little weights and the tests he was actually a little bit heavier than we expected my whole pregnancy I was told that I was going to have a tiny baby my belly was quite small and my partner is about my height a little bit taller and neither one of us are big people so we're told the whole time that we're going to have this small cute little baby but he was actually a pretty big sized baby and I'd, and he was so squished in there. He even to this day likes to hold his hands tight to his face and his legs tucked in like a little frog because I think he spent a lot of time really squished that that's just a really comfortable position for him now. So after I gave birth and I showered and I was stitched up, I was put in a wheelchair and I was sent up to a birthing, uh, up into the recovery rooms. I had a lady next to me as one of the neighbors. This was about 10, 10 a.m. by this point and they came in did all the tests and my partner and I finally got a bit of sleep about two hours sleep um, and then yeah that was that was pretty much it and that's the start of the journey with this little guy now we are 10 days in we have had a few we've had one little hospital visit so far which is a little scary rash but everything's been fine and um, I'm gonna start making a couple other videos based on my pregnancy experience and my birthing stories and looking after this guy in the meantime. So thank you guys so much for listening to my story. Now, I always wanted to do a natural birth, natural um, birth. So I think it's really about the mindset that you take going into it. Having the conversation with your partner before you go into it, saying exactly what you want. I did say so clearly that I really wanted a natural birth and he actually took that to heart and said, this is what you wanted. And he was the one that pushed me through it. Because otherwise, I would have been like the other women that were there and wouldn't be had wouldn't be able to walk for the rest of the day, or will be stuck in bed, which is exactly what I did not want. I wanted to have freedom as soon as I gave birth, and I got to have a shower straight away, and I got to stand up. I didn't have to have a catheter. I got to go in and out of the bathroom without any issue. I got to have my friends and family around without being drugged out, and I got to enjoy my moments with this guy and remember the whole thing without being completely out of the, this world because I had an epidural. So have the conversations with your partner and make it really clear what you want, but maybe have a really good safe word if you are in pain and he does send the doctor away and you do desperately need it. But the one thing to keep in mind is that the contractions is actually nothing. Like it's the worst it gets. And when you get to the pushing part, it's probably one of the best parts. It's not the scary part. It is the best part. It hurts and it is painful, but it's a pain that you need and it's a pain that you want. Now, one thing that kept me going is that every time the contractions got bad and, and I was in agony and I wanted to give up, I kept saying to myself in my head, I was like, pain is good, pain is good, pain is good, pain is good. And I repeated that motto or that slogan to myself over and over and over again for the whole 13 hours of active labor. Every time pain came and I was in pain, I just said, pain is good, pain is good, pain is good. I want pain, I need pain. And that was probably the thing that got me through it, that and finding a position, for, like the, being on all fours in the shower, I was in that position for about six hours, my knees were bright red, I was in so much pain after trying to stand because I was stuck in that position or using the bath, I couldn't stand being in the bed, when they had to check me to see how much, see how far I was dilating, they put me in the bed, it was agony, 
absolutely hated being in the bed. I found that so much, so painful. But if I was gonna have another baby again, I definitely would like to aim for another natural birth. Hopefully it won't be as long as it was that time. I think if you told me it was gonna be a 24 hour labor or I was gonna be pushing for two hours, I probably would want to say, oh my God, I need the epidural if I wanna go through that. But you don't know what you're in for. I think that's what makes it so much easier when you're just looking at the clock thinking, one more hour, one more hour, but then you think, I just got through another hour, I can do another hour. Like every contraction, you ask yourself, can I do another contraction? Yes. Can I do another contraction? Yes. And you just take it one contraction at a time, one minute at a time. There was one point there that I asked my partner what time it is, and he looked at me, he's like, it's 10 minutes since you asked me last. And I was like, no way in hell. I couldn't, I, I swear it had been two hours. I did not believe him that it was 10 minutes. It, the time goes so slow. I think the time went very slow for him as well because he was so tired and he had to keep that hose on my back the whole time. His arm was in so much pain and he was so uncomfortable as well. And every time he tried to touch me, I said, don't touch me. Every time he tried to talk to me, I said, don't talk to me. Or I would tell him, I need you to talk to me. And then he'll ask me a question. And I was like, don't ask me a question. I need you to talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. So it was definitely an experience for both of us. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope this helps anyone that's going to attempt a natural birth and that you can do it, but it is about the mindset that you have going into it and it is about the partner that you have during it. You just have to find a position that works for you. Know that the pain is only temporary and that the pain is good pain. You want pain and that at the end, you if you do a natural birth, you get to walk around freely. A lot of people actually tear less with natural births and you actually get to experience the moment with your, your with your little one without being completely drugged up in the meantime. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. And in the meantime, keep being strong, happy, and healthy. And if you haven't already, press that big red subscribe button down there and give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm.